Simmons is in the building, and as you can see, in the place to be, sitting directly next to me, ladies and gentlemen, it is the one and only Lizette Melendez is in the building. <laughs> what, 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 what's up, everybody? What's All up, right, up, there she is. I'm here. I made it. It's freezing out there, and I'm still here with my gloves on. As long as I have my gloves on, I'm good. No, I'm thank it's you, good. thank you, thank you. You know, m me and Lizette, we've been talking. Uh, back and forth, off and on, some time ago, trying to get you here, and and the one thing, first of all, nobody could be mad at, is that you are busy. You are staying busy from in New York to Miami, finishing up this project, finishing up this album. So, I am glad now that you're done with it, and that you are here to talk about it, because we're gonna talk about it. We gotta talk about it. Yeah, we, we definitely talk gonna talk about it. It was a process doing um, the remix first. You know, Rise of the Original was released in in, right. in August. In August, right? And then I, I thought I was like, I want to get my ladies on here because to me it's it's a message. You yeah. know, it's a song about uh, whether it's domestic or or verbal abuse. We've right. all been in a place where either we've been talked down to mm -hmm. or told we can't do this or do that and I wanted to inspire I think now I have a platform to really have a voice for those that feel that they don't have a voice so. well definitely we definitely gonna make sure you, the platform that. is here for you now tell you what you got a few minutes to hang with us right of course yeah all right yeah. ladies and gentlemen the one and only Lizette Melendez is in the building we gonna talk y'all don't disappear nowhere check it <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. My special guest, Lizette Melendez, is in the building. Thank y'all for joining me, and thank you for taking the time to come here well, to hang out. And um, I am glad to see that you are back out there doing your thing. You know something? You are a New Yorker, because I can take you back to some days that when you're, you, know, you was recording, your music was out there, and you were just out and about in New York City in the clubs, just out there with the people. You're like, as far as I can remember, it seems like you've always been a people person. Um, are you still that kind of person now in the day? Um, I, you know, back in the day, I, I was kind of, in, well, I was very shy. Mm -hmm. And I still am, you know, I, I was introverted. And right. I still am, you know, that's something that you don't grow out of. Um, but I was thrown out there. I mean, my record came out. Mm -hmm. I was a girl from around the way, from a project girl that didn't really have an image. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if I wanted to wear a baseball cap or stiletto heels. Right. I was like caught in between. Mm -hmm. um, but like we talked before, um, when you have machinery behind you and right. you have the campaigns behind you and labels pushing you, you have no time to sit there. Right. You know, you got to go, you know, when, when they, they tell you to go. Exactly. You know, and I was doing radio. I was doing clubs. I was doing promotion. I was doing in stores that they don't really do today, right? Nah, all the, so all the mom and papa stores are yeah, no, no, no yeah. longer existing, so everything is pretty much digital. Yeah. That's what we mentioned before. Yeah. So the scene has changed. What, what, what do you think about the music industry today? Because you, you just said it. It has changed drastically. It definitely has changed. Do you think... Um, I don't want to say now that you're back because you've still been around. So I hate using that. I hate saying, "Oh, now you're back." Don't make no. it a comeback. Like, no. hello, I've yeah. been here for you. Yeah, I've been exactly. here. I've been. I've been exactly. performing. I've been doing everything. You know, for years. I have. I never left the scene. I just stopped recording right. and putting out material because it's, it's a lot of financial, backing that yes. you need to make anything happen. Yeah. So, you know, I pretty much shied away from recording. Period. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know what to do if I wanted to do it's a lot of work no, yeah, you know it is. and yes, it it's a lot of learning I have to re-educate myself on, on how to release music how to download upload all that you know that goes a long way I had people do that for me before mm -hmm. I don't have that any longer and um, I don't want to have anybody tell me like what I should put out or A&Rs and all that because I think with my first album they chose the wrong follow-ups as mm. singles mm. you know because i didn't have a say right and i have a say now and it's not about you know wanting to just be the boss of everything i think having a good team behind you right. is very important yeah so. and, and your vision your vision too yeah and, and yeah. speaking of during, during that time in your early days when you was making records tell us first of all tell us a little bit about um how you actually even got started 
into the music business? Because you just said you were shy, but you was thrown to this. So how, how did the world get to know Lizette Melendez? Well, I was always into uh, the street jams. Remember back in the day, they used to, just, they used to plug in you know, mm-hmm. the electricity through the lamppost and all that. So I'm from Jefferson Projects, and all they did, I remember growing up to music. Right. So um, over the years, you know, once I became a teen, uh, one of my best friends had a boyfriend, and his name was Crazy Legs from the Rocksteady Crew. Ah, there you go, yes. Yeah, For so, all the hip-hop heads, you better know. Yeah, <laughs> Rocksteady. So, you know, I was caught up in that circle because I used to watch them break dance, mm-hmm. and I used to always be in the street jams with, with, with them, you know, and, and with friends and all. And I didn't know anyone in the scene but him. Right. And believe it or not, we created a, girl, a group together. Really? Me and Crazy Legs. Right. So we did start a group, and I would go to his house in, in the Bronx, and we would practice, and we would sing together. Mm-hmm. And it never panned out, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but through him, I met a songwriter, mm-hmm. and his name was Tomax. But what kind of group was this? It was just, we didn't even know what we wanted to do. We used to, we used to sing um, Atlantic, Atlantic Star. Right, right, right. For always right, 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 right. And we Oh, y'all wanted to be a sappy know. pop group? Yeah, we didn't know. We would just practice, you right, know. Right, right. So the funniest thing was watching him sing, you know. Right. Um, and then myself, I had no direction. I had no image. I didn't know what I wanted to mm. do, you know. But I knew I wanted to sing. Right, right. That's all I knew. Um, so that never panned out. I met the songwriter. And um, we created a, another group. So now it's me, two, two guys, and myself. Mm. And we went to Carlos Berrios' house one time to audition. We sounded horrible. Oh. <laughs> we sounded horrible. I mean, our, I think when you do duets and you do a group, you mm-hmm. have to have that chemistry. Right, yes. Your voices yes. have to blend. They just yes. were not working. Mm-hmm. Um, so from there, you know, I kept it moving. Carlos was looking for a vocalist to do a, re- a song called Make Noise. It mm-hmm. was already produced and all. And um, I came in. I dropped a vocal for him. And it was a big record for New York City for mm. DJs. Right, you know, right. It was called Make Noise. Exactly. And yeah. then that, you know, kept me busy a little bit in the club scene, made a little name for myself because I was featured on the record. It wasn't right. even Lizette Melendez. It was After Dark featuring Lizette Melendez. Right. And um, we just kept looking for that one record to put out, and we couldn't find anything, mm. you know, until I dropped a, a demo uh, for Together Forever. And right. it was supposed to be for someone else. Oh, Really? I knew once I dropped that vocal, it was magic. Right, right. Like, this record, you know, is magical. Mm. Um, so it didn't work out for him either because he just didn't, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't a singer. He was a DJ. Mm. So he pretty much kept, he went his route, kept doing what he did, and I had the record. We recorded it. Nobody liked it. Wow. Nobody liked it. They wanted to change my name. They wanted to change my image, though I really didn't have one. Mm. Um, there was... Um, it took like a year, a year and a half to get the record signed. But why do you think it took that long for um, radio or even DJs to say, okay, this record is, is it's moving? Well, once it was released, it was just, it, it blew up, mm-hmm. you know, but getting it picked up, picked up. and get, getting it signed was a mission. Right. Because first of all, my voice was different. Mm-hmm. Um, if you remember, you know, back in the day, you know, you had the cover girls that had a distinctive sound. Right. It was more like a young, playful sound. Right. And then when I came out, Lizette Melendez, would, you know, I had more of a bassy voice. Mm-hmm. I had more of a little gr- grit to the voice. And they just didn't get it. Right. You know, and then, you know, my name, again, I hated my name. You know, Melendez. I, you know, just didn't like it back in the day, mm. but I refused to change it. Right, right. I was like, I'm not gonna to to what? Like, I had no clue. And we tried. Like, we, you know, we didn't know where and what to, you know, name myself because I didn't even have a look. I didn't have an image. I didn't know, you know, who I was as an artist. Right. Um. So it took a while. <laughs> What did you consider yourself back then? Did you consider yourself a freestyle artist or were you more of a pop artist? And even to this day, they still like, I mean, are you comfortable being labeled as a freestyle artist? I'm comfortable with it. I, I didn't only record freestyle. I know, that's, that, what, and, that's what I'm saying. And that's one of the reasons why, why I kind of like, I'm not 100% like, yes, that's all I am. Because mm. I released Goody Goody, which was yes. a, a massive hit in Japan mm-hmm. um, when it was released in the States here. 
that's when Hot 97 became Hot yeah. 97 more hip hop. Right. So there was no outlet for freestyle. Right. You know, um, but Goody Goody was a hip hop record. Then I did a I recorded Salsa, which was Algo de Mi with Sergio George that right. does Mark Anthony and India yes. and all that. Mm -hmm. So I've done a combination of everything. You right. know, so when you look at my my history, I can go to a salsa. A concert or a, a salsa club and sing a salsa record. Right. You know, promoters mm -hmm. ask me, "You do hip hop? You do?" I do everything. Right. You know, my biggest um, genre was freestyle. You know, that's what they know me first and foremost for. So that's why I try to plug in now, even with social media. We were talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I'm intro I'm reintroducing myself to people right. because a lot of DJs don't know I did make noise. You right. know, they don't know about salsa, you know, with, that I did with Sergio. They don't know a lot about, you know, Lizette Melendez outside freestyle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'll just feed them little by little so they can know what I am what and about. what I'm about. Um, you actually were signed to a major company, mm -hmm. um, which was exactly uh, uh, Sony. F Sony. So, well, that was Fever. Sony yeah, Fever's um, had a distribution deal with Columbia. With Columbia and right. then, it, you know, everybody, st then it started switching. Then I was with Russell Simmons. Right, right. And Leo exactly. Cohen. And right. We're still part of Columbia and, right. and, and yeah. Sony. Right, yeah. So, yeah. you know, then I'm, I'm with rappers. I'm with, you know, they didn't know what direction to put, you know, they didn't know what to do with me. Mm, when right. I tell you they really didn't know what to do is because we had so many chefs in the kitchen mm -hmm. that by the time it came to me, they were like, what do we do with this girl? Right, exactly. You know? So, I mean, things do happen for a reason. That's the upside that I try to always stay positive and say, you know, mm -hmm. it, timing was everything because as I was getting released, they were releasing my record, they released Mariah Carey exactly. at you, the same time. Well, a good segue. Give me your experience of knowing that you were going through this process being pushed behind because all the the time and money and dedication was going to, and we talking about very early. You actually was out before Mariah Carey, mm -hmm. well, actually. Well, you they, know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, how how what did you think about that? And how did you feel? I mean, give us the real truth about that moment for you. It was really like, yo, I'm trying to get my shine on. What y'all doing? Yeah, you know? it was painful because there's nothing you can do when you have a Tommy Matola. Right. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's his his wife. Right. You know, this, at the time. At yeah. the time, and he really did what he wanted to do with her. Right. And who am I to try to rock that boat? Right. Um, it's painful to get, you know, shelved as well. Yes. You know that you're signed to a label for X amount of years and then they don't put out your music or right. if it comes out they put it literally on a shelf on the and shelf. they don't do anything with it. Yes. So it's it's kind of hard to put hard work into a project that people don't even respect. Right. I don't think they took the time to really know who I was as as an artist. Right. You you know? And you're talking about the people within the company. Within the company. Yeah, there were the there company. were a handful that really wanted that loved me mm -hmm. but there were many more mm -hmm. that just didn't know who I was, right. you know? And then when you start changing the CEOs and your yeah. A&Rs in the middle of your project, yeah. there's a problem because now they don't know about you. Mm -hmm. no, they're going to move to who they're signing. Right. So if they're interested in a new artist, if they're interested in signing anybody else, they're going to go with that one. They're not, disregard whoever's already signed. Exactly, yeah. Because you know, that's not their project. I mean, did, did that make it hard for you knowing that they were shelving your project um, to continue on in the music industry? Yes, by far. Mm -hmm. I mean, I there were many nights that I would just cry mm -hmm. and just wonder, second guess, like, it, am I doing this? Or should I do this? Am I meant to do it? You know, you second guess yourself. Right. You know, because your career is in, in their hands. So mm -hmm. what do you do? Right. And you're, you're bound because you're signed to a contract. Yes. You know, and mm -hmm. I don't have enough money to, you know, to hire a lawyer to get me off. It was just... And I didn't want to get off the label because it was Sony. And, right. you know, so, so I'm like, let me deal with it. It's okay, you know, and timing is everything else. Yeah. But uh, you reintroducing yourself not only to a new audience, but you reintroducing yourself to people who love you and your work um, with new music. I got it right here, which we talking about. The Rise Remix, please tell us, how did you get these other two beautiful, fantastic, freestyle pop artists in the same zone 
with you on this record. Don't ask. I don't even know how. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> We're talking um, about Lisa Lisa and Judy Torres. Ju- yes, Lisa Lisa, Judy Torres, Seabank is on right, it as C- well. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, we've done shows together over the years, mm-hmm. and Lisa Lisa was a big inspiration. Right. Me growing up, coming mm-hmm. from, you know, my neighborhood. We went to the same high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I saw this girl, and I saw her video, and I heard her song, and I saw her, her stature, her build, and I looked like someone that was making moves right. in the industry right. before I even came out. Mm-hmm. That gave me a big boost because I, f- I felt like she can do it, I can do it. You mm-hmm. know, um, So she was a great inspiration. And over the years, we've been doing shows together. We run into each other every so often. Very cool. She's oh, very yeah, cool. Judy's she very cool. Mm-hmm. Seabank you know, is um, doing her thing again. And at, when I decided to do the remix, she was the first person I considered. Okay. You know, but... I was scared, honestly. And why I was that? Because I just felt like this girl has double platinum records on her wall. Mm-hmm. You know, um, she's been doing her thing for X amount of years. Yes. And um, women are very hard to get together. And um, I grew up very tomboy. Mm-hmm. Because all my friends, I could never have girlfriends, like friends, girls, mm-hmm. because there was always a problem. You know, I never maintained a great relationship with friends growing up because... I always felt like we couldn't either get along or there was always intimidation. There was always something that I never felt support from the ladies, but I, um, from the girls growing up. So all my friends were boys. Mm. So I was afraid because I just didn't want to hear the word no. Right. You know, and not that there was anything wrong with that because she's a busy woman. They mm-hmm. all are. Mm-hmm. I just didn't want to hear that, you know, so I was afraid. And I want to inspire everyone here. Don't ever think you can't do it. Right. You know, give yourself the opportunity and the chance to, even if the worst thing they can do is tell you is no. Exactly. You know, yes. at least you tried. I didn't think she was going to be able to make it. She's also an actress. She's doing her thing. Yes. And she actually picked up the phone and said, tell me when and where, and I'm there. I want to do this. Mm. You know, and I was thrown back. I gave her the address. I pulled up to the studio. She was already there. There it is. You know, and there I was am- I was like, wow. I was thankful and... um I felt blessed, and mm. that's why I want to inspire anyone, and it, with male, female, black, white, whatever. Mm. You can do whatever you want yeah. if you play. If re- realistically, though, you have no. to be a realist and put your dream in action. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, actually, real quick, tell everybody a little bit about the song too. I know you was, you was kicking it off early, uh, when we start the show off, but give everybody a little bit of insight about the song. You know, it's about uh, domestic violence, um, which is something. In this day and age, we shouldn't even still be seeing or hearing about. I know. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the song Rise and how you came up with the concept of it. Well, the song, uh, to me, everyone has been either kicked down emotionally, Mm -hmm. uh, physically. Um, Mentally, I think it's a hard, the hardest thing to, to... to feel is mental abuse right. or mental bullying. Mm-hmm. Um, cyber bullying is a big thing. Yes. And I'm experiencing it as we speak. Mm-hmm. And I'm a grown woman, right, you know. Right. Um, and I have my moments that I'm very, very um, sad about it. Mm-hmm. Then I turn to uh, feel depressed and something that we don't want to do to ourselves. Exactly. Um, and I don't like to feel bullied in any way. Mm-hmm. And... I wrote the song according to what I witnessed growing up. I never got um, physically abused by any relationship or any man, mm. um, thank God. But a lot of women have, right. and they're afraid to talk about it, and they're embarrassed, you know. Um, so I chose to hit, uh, tackle that issue with the video, and also, you know, for for bullying, just in general. Yeah. You know, you can't talk to people a certain way. You well, can't yeah. treat people like you're less than them. Mm. You know, you, you see the, the way the world is going now. It it's is. Like, and that's why I think it's so important that um, you did a record like this, um, just to show people that you know it, it may sound cliche and kind of corny, whatever. I think we at a point now where if we don't share or or, or, or show enough love uh, to each other, you know, we're deteriorating. All yeah. of us. You know, and that's why I think it's a beautiful um, idea and concept and song that you did this and got your other. Um, ladies to join you, C-Bank and Judy Torres and Lisa Lisa to join you on the record to show that um, that uh, that unity that women can uh, unite together to change something. Yeah. Or be a part because it's it's something that's still going on but help change it. You know, because none of us, you know, ask me who have daughters, don't want to see anything happen to them or, or even like a girlfriend or a friend or anyone. You know, it's a sad thing to see. Um, like you said, you grow up seeing it. Yeah. Um, 
you kind of felt to yourself, you know, what can I do? Or why didn't I do anything? But I'm going to be honest with you, doing this is even more enough. And, you know, we'll pre- we definitely appreciate that. Well, thank um, you. And we thank love the you. fact that you're out there doing that, spreading the word. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I know everybody go through depression. And like you said, that's, that's a powerful thing you said when you said, who says you have? I'm going to tell you this right now. There are people out there who love you. There are people who don't Thank even you. know you love you. And me, I'm going to tell you this. I know I love you because I've known you for years. And I'm going to say this to you. I know about the DJ that didn't want to play your record because they didn't like it. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. As a DJ myself, who has a wide audience from the 90s even to now. It don't matter if we like the record or not. There's somebody out there who may like it. So it's your job to introduce it to them. You don't not play the record because you go, well, I don't like it, so I'm not going to play it. Or, but if I play it and my fans, may, it don't matter. Your fans may like it. Your fans may not like it. But there might be somebody who's not a fan of yours who just tuned into your show who may say, yo, that, that joint you played by, who was that? They open doors. So right. I would say, again, coming from old school, because I used to do, work at WBLS. You do radio at WBLS. You always, no matter how, there are a lot of records I don't like, <laughs> but I play them. So I'm going to say this to you now. You have my 100% support. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Though I do like the record. But I'm just saying to other people, if you don't like it, do what you can do to support. That's what's important. And I just want to tell you that now because of the fact that I know how brutal people can be thinking that because they just, they, they just now. And it's like, listen, I appreciate that you are, the, but I need your help. Can you break this to audience who probably never heard this? Right. So you have my support um, all the way. And I will do my best, and I'm pretty good, to get mm-hmm. other DJs to be involved too. Because it's important for us to continue to support each other. Absolutely. Um, and get the music back out there. And I appreciate that. And that's why, you know, DJs, to me, play a big role. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to have respect for you, too. Right, You know what I mean? So I used to come on after Frankie Crocker. So I used to work at WBLS. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying I know how important it is for a guy like Frankie Crocker. There are lots of records Frankie Crocker didn't like, but he broke it for the audience. That's our job, to break the music. There Absolutely. might be some people out, even your own fans may go, I didn't know Lizette Melendez had a record out. Oh, I like this song, Rise. I heard it on DJ Such and Such show. But they thinking, well, my fans may not like it if I don't like it. You don't know that. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got to be a careful DJ to know exactly how to work a record. And I'm only speaking, I'm speaking this because I don't want to put you in that predicament. I'm just saying me as a DJ who played mm-hmm. in clubs, Latin Quarters, you in the oh, squares, wow. Roxy's, and on WBLS. So I'm just saying, I know how important it is to break a record. So I'm just going to leave it right there <laughs> and just let you know that you have my support 100%. And like I said before, you can overcome, you know, and I'm not afraid to talk about feelings. That's just the way I've been, that, I'm, but I'm in a great place. Mm-hmm. I just have a day. Some days are not good, Well, you know. The and days that you're not good. Text me. I'll text you back. Well, it's we're going to send some positive vibes out. That's all we're going to do. All right? That works. Oh, there you go. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Lizette Melendez is in the building. We'll be back. <laughs>